Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edicide Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that we have started a series on polynuclear hydrocarbons and heterocyclic compounds and today we are conducting yet another lecture in the same series. In today's lecture we will try to understand purines. Purines are a kind of heterocyclic compound. We will try to understand its preparation, its properties and characteristics. We will also try to see various individual parts of purines. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. Sushila Singhal. Dr. Singhal is assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry in Deshpande College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you, Amriji. Good day, viewers. Today in the series of polynuclear hydrocarbons and heterocyclic compound, we will discuss about the purine. Purine is a heterocyclic compound. You might have heard about the uric acid in hospitals for the osteo patients that doctor prescribes the test for uric acid in blood for those patients which are having the uh, pain in the joints. This uric acid is a purine and also you might have heard about the caffeine or theine alkaloid in the tea extracts. This caffeine and theine, this is also a purine compound, it is a purine derivative. So today we will discuss about uh, these uric acid, caffeine and also ATP and GTP, the energy rich constituents of genetic material in nucleic acids. So uh, in today's lecture, we will first discuss about the general, general properties of purines, their preparation uric acid introduction, then how we isolate this uric acid from tea extract, then structure determination of uric acid, then we will do some synthetic methods of uric acid, further we will do properties of uric acid and in the second module we will discuss about the xanthine molecule, its preparation and properties, then we will discuss the caffeine introduction, how we will extract the caffeine from the tea. Then further we will do the structure determination of caffeine and its property and preparations. Some uses and poisoning of caffeine. Then in this uh, next uh, we will discuss about adenine and guanine nucleobases. So first of all in the introduction of purines. Purines are derived from the parent substance purine and are therefore called as purines. This purine is uh, not present naturally. It is a synthetically compound. This purine structure it contains two condensed heterocyclic rings that is one pyrimidine ring which is fused to an imidazole ring. So we are having two rings together in the purine which are condensed at ortho positions. These purines are considered to be built from two molecules of urea and one molecule of dicarboxylic acid. Purines are the totomeric form of following these two structures, these totomeric forms in which we are having the proton at this nitrogen and in the second structure we are having proton at the this uh, second nitrogen. So these are two totomeric form in which we are having a proton shift in the two these two uh, nitrogens which are isolated by a carbon. Now purine since these do not occur naturally but is a synthetic compound. However, various purine derivatives occur in nature both in the free state as well as its bases and glycosides. In the free state it is present in the form of uric acid, xanthine and caffeine and in its base, bases and glycoside forms it is present in adenine and guanine in nucleic acids. These purine also occur in nature as its derivative which is 9-D ribofuronicide which is also called as nebularine. This purine synthetic compound is a colorless solid having a melting point of 217 degree centigrade. This purine is highly soluble in water and has both acidic and basic characters. Here you have you can see the structure of purine where numbering is also done 
in this purine this nitrogen gets a number 1 then numbering on the left side it is 2 3 4 is the condensed carbon then 5 6 and imidazole ring will have the carbon number 7 nitrogen number 7 carbon 8 and the 9 and respective in its totomeric form. Now comes the classification of these purines. These natural purines are either hydroxy derivatives or they may be amino derivatives of the parent substance purines. So they are classified into two types. One is oxypurine. These are hydroxy derivatives of purines and these exhibits ketoenol totomerism. This is the ketoenol totomerism in which this structure is the enol form. We are having a double bond which is in and a hydroxy group which is all. So together it is called as enol which is in reversible condition with the keto form. This is the keto form in which we are having the ketonic group. So example of this class of oxypurines are uric acid, xanthine and its bases also which are caffeine, theobromine and hypoxanthine. Then comes the second derivative of purine which is amino purine. These amino derivatives of purines are present in nucleic acids. Some examples are adenine and guanine. This is the adenine which is 6 amino purine and this is the guanine which is 2 amino 6 oxo purine. Now comes the synthetic methods of purine. One of them is Albert and Brown method. In this method, purine can be prepared by condensation of these two reactants. One of them is 4,5. This is 4,5 diamino pyrimidine, which condenses with formic acid in the presence of sulfuric acid to give us purine. Purine will cyclize the molecule, will condense the molecule in a manner that water will go out from these two positions OH and H from this and O from this and H2 from here. So we will get the cyclized purine. Then, then in the second step we can also prepare this purine from the uric acid. Uric acid on treatment with phosphoryl chloride will first give us 268 trichloropurine which on treatment with hydroiodide will yield 26 diiodopurine here you can see in the reaction this is the uric acid first this uric acid will undergo enolization these keto group will enolize to form the hydroxy groups then these hydroxy group on reaction with phosphoryl chloride will convert into trichloro derivative which is 246 trichloropurine which on reduction with hydrogen ionide at 0 degree centigrade will give us 26 diiodopurine which on further reaction with zinc dust will undergo distillation at 100 degree centigrade to give us purine. This purine is further will totomerize to give the two totomeric mixture of the purine. Now comes the general reactions of purines and its derivative alkyl purine. One of them is basic character. Purine is a base with a pKa value of 2.5 and since it is a base it will react with acid to give protonated urine. This is the purine. It will react with the proton to form this protonated purine. This protonated purine since it is containing the 4 nitrogen it can pro protonate at any of the 4 nitrogen and we will get here the protonated product. Since it is acidic also, so it is a stronger acid with a pKa value of 8.9. It is stronger acid than phenol with the pKa value of 9.98 and imidazole with the pKa value of 14.2 and from the benz imidazole also which is having a pKa value of 12.3. This stronger acidic character is due to the stabilization of the anions by the delocalization. Here you can see that after, after the removal of this proton which is the acidity character that after going this proton anion will be formed 
and this anion is resonance stabilized of four structures. So, more the number of resonance stabilized structure, more will be the stability of the anion and more will be the character. So, uh, from this four denuclearized structure, we can say that it is strong acid. Purine can also undergo alkylation. Alkylation of purine with dimethyl sulfate or methyl iodide, iodide forms 9 methyl purine. This alkylation reaction goes via formation of intermediate purine anion. First, this anion is formed which is unstable. So, it immediately converts into its substituted product which is 9 methyl purine. These purine can also react with nucleophiles. The nucleophilic addition of hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide takes place at C8 in 9 methyl purine and finally it produces the 5 amino 4 methyl amino pyrimidine. Here this nucleophilic addition will take place at C8 position of this 9 methyl purine. So, nucleophilic attack will take place at C8 position and then it will uh, break the cycle of uh, this imidazole ring and we will get here the 5 amino 4 methyl amino pyrimidine product. Further, these purines can also undergo oxidation with the different oxidizing agents. On oxidation with per acetic acid, it forms an oxide at the N1 position. So, this N1 position will get oxidized to give us an oxide. Although these purines they contains double bonds, but they do not undergo electrophilic substitution reactions like nitration, sulfonation and halogenation. It is also resistant to hydrogenation in the presence of palladium and charcoal which other heterocyclic compounds shows. Now, we will discuss about some individual members of purines. One of them is uric acid, which is also called as 268 purine trion. Here, we have shown the ball stick model of uric acid, in which these red balls are oxygen, these are carbonyl compounds, these are carbonyl groups of the uric acid. This is very important derivative of purine, it is oxypurine. It is a colorless crystalline solid having no taste and no smell. Although it is crystalline, but it decomposed on heating about 400 degrees centigrade. This uric acid is sparingly soluble in hot water and insoluble in cold water and other organic solvents like CCL4 and CS2. It also is a mixture of two totomeric form which is 268 purine try on in which we are having three keto groups and this second structure is the enol form in which we are having 2, 6 and 8 trihydroxypurine. So, here hydrogen shift is there in this totomerism and we will get here a mixture of these two products. Now, where this uric acid comes? This uric acid is the chief constituent of the solid excrement of birds reptiles and insects and the natural accumulation of sea birds excrement found on certain islands contains about 25 percent of uric acid and snakes excrement contains 90 percent in the form of ammonium ureate. It is also produced in humans by degradation of proteins that constitutes the tissues and muscles. Normally, small amounts of uric acid up to 0.3 grams per 100 ml is also present in blood. It is excreted in urine about 0.7 grams per 24 hours. But if excess amount of uric acid sometimes get accumulated in bladder, kidney or joints as the crystals of monosodium ureate, then it causes a disease which is called as GOT, which is a osteo disease. Now comes the isolation of uric acid that uh, from where we can isolate this uric acid. So, we uh, first isolation method is from human urine. When the human urine is concentrated and then it is treated with concentrated hydrochloric acid and finally on cooling it gives the precipitate of uric acid. This solid mass is then recrystallized from hot water to give the pure uric acid. 
we can also get this uric acid from the guano which is a sea bud excrete and from this guano this uric acid is present on large scale which is largely the ammonium ureate first this excrete is powdered and boiled with sodium hydroxide solution until the evolution of ammonia ceases then this hot solution of sodium ureate obtained is filtered and powdered into hydrochloric acid and from where on cooling we will get the uric acid this uric acid separates as a fine crystals mass on allowing the solution to stand in cold and then it is filtered and dried in air and from where we will get the pure uric acid then comes the structure determination of uric acid from the elemental analysis and molecular mass determination the molecular formula of uric acid is found to be C5H4N4O3 then comes the unsaturation and its uh, functional group detection since it is containing uh, no uh, sing, uh, double bond in case of its keto form so we can discard that that step and since it doesn't contain the um, functional group of carboxylic acid it contains carbonyl group so it uh, gives the reactions of carbonyl compound and in case of enol uh, tautomeric structure it also gives the reactions of uh, hydroxy group also then we will uh, do the presence of 4 and h groups which can be done by uh, this reaction by direct methylation of uric acid forms its tetramethyl derivative which upon hydrolysis yields four molecules of methyl amine after getting this four molecules of methyl amine we can say that it contains four imine groups still we don't do not know the structure we can uh, we know only that it contains four imine group in this case then we will do oxidation and reduction reactions on this uric acid with different oxidizing agents so on oxidation with nitric acid mild which is a mild oxidation it gives a equimolar mixture of aloxan and urea urea is a well known structure so we have to design the structure of for the aloxan molecule moiety when this aloxan is hydrolyzed with sodium hydroxide it also gives equimolar mixture of urea and a meso oxalic acid since this aloxan it does not contains free carboxylic group of and amino group it must be a meso oxyl urea this is a meso oxyl urea which is confirmed by its synthesis of aloxan from urea and meso oxalic acid so from its synthesis from urea and meso oxalic acid we can see we can say that the aloxan should have the uh, structure formula like this we have we, which you can see in the uh, reaction in this aloxan this is the urea part and this half part is uh, the meso oxalic acid which condenses together to give us the aloxan the formation of this aloxan from hydrolysis of uric acid it reveals that it contains a pyrimidine nucleus in it it is a pyrimidine nucleus in which we are having two nitrogens in the same ring then on oxidation with lead dioxide different oxidizing agent we have used here with aqueous suspension of lead oxide it gives allantoin and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide well known structure so here also we have to design the structure for the allantoin moiety and for this we have to do the hydrolysis on this allantoin with alkali which will give us two molecules of urea and one molecule of glyoxalic acid so from these hydrolytic products it is believed that it should have these two structures together in the form of diureate of glyoxalic acid then we will do the oxidation reduction uh, reaction on allantoin with nitric acid which will further give us urea and parabenic acid urea a well known structure here also we have to design the structure for the parabenic acid parabenic acid also does not contain a free carboxylic group or a amino group as that of alexon so further on hydrolysis it also gives 
urea and oxalic acid. So, on this basis of the product hydrolytic product we can say that this urea and oxalic acid will condense together to give the oxaluria which is called as parabenic acid. So, on the basis of these above facts on the basis of this oxidation reaction on the uric acid it is clear that allantoin and parabenic acid is joined to a molecule of urea. Then we will do the reduction reaction on allantoin which will give urea and hydantoin. Here on reduction of allantoin with hydroidic acid will give us urea and hydantoin a different again a different molecule. So, on controlled hydro hydrolysis of hydantoin will give us hydantoic acid which on further hydrolysis will give us the three molecules one of them is glycine a amino acid carbon dioxide and ammonia. On the basis of these hydrolytic products it is believed that this hydantoin is glycoil urea since we are getting here glycine and uh, from reduction we are getting urea. So, these together can be uh, set together to form glycoil urea. So, the structure of hydantoin is confirmed by its synthesis. Now, on the basis of these uh, discussed observation allantoin is given as a structure given below. This is the allantoin structure which explains the previous reactions of oxidation reduction and hydrolysis that on reduction it forms hydantoin and urea and on oxidation with nitric acid it gives parabenic acid and urea and on reaction with sulfuric acid it gives three molecules two of urea and one of glyoxalic acid. So, by concluding these products of oxidation reduction and hydrolysis we can uh, design the structure of allantoin which is this structure. This uric acid is a totomeric mixture when it is reacted with phosphoryl chloride that is POCl3 which is also called as phosgene. This uric acid gives us 268 trichloropurine indicating the presence of 3 hydroxy group. Thus uric acid is a mixture of triketo and triinol forms since it gives trichloropurine. So, it it should have before chlorination it should have four uh, uh, these three hydroxy groups which can be possible only by its uh, hydrogen shift which shows that it is a mixture of two totomers. Further the structure of this uric acid is confirmed by its synthesis. For the synthesis of uric acid scientist Berant and Rosen they synthesized this uric acid from urea and ethyl acetoacetate by condensation method. Condensation is a method in which small molecules like water ammonia uh, they go out as a byproduct and we get the cyclized product. So, here in this reaction also this is the urea and this is ethyl acetoacetate. These condense together in the presence of sulfuric acid ethanol from this ammonia and this ethyl part will go out and water from these two position will go out and we will get here a cyclized product which is called as 6 methyl uracil which on reaction with nitric acid will undergo nitration to give 5 nitro uracil 6 carboxylic acid. This 5 nitro uracil 6 carboxylic acid on heating with water will undergo decarboxylation this CO2 will go out and we will get here 5 nitro uracil. This 5 nitro uracil then on reduction with tin and hydrochloric acid will reduce this nitro group into the amino group and we will get here a mixture of 5 uracil, 5 amino uracil and 5 hydroxy uracil. Then this mixture will convert like this that is 5 amino uracil will also convert into the 5 hydroxy uracil in the presence of nitrous acid. Nitrous acid will convert this 5 amino uracil into the 5 hydroxy uracil which further will convert into the uric acid on reaction with bromine water. On bromine water first 
hydrox one hydroxy group will be introduced at the uh, adjacent position of the previous hydroxy group which on further reaction with urea in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid on heating will give us the uric acid which contains two rings one of them is pyrimidine ring and one of them is imidazole ring. So, here we will get the uric acid from Behrand and Rosen synthesis. Then comes the Bayer's Fischer synthesis. In this synthesis, it also involves a condensation reaction of urea and malonic acid. Here also two molecules will condense in the, in the presence of phosphoryl chloride and they will give us barbituric acid. In this barbituric acid, you can see that this half part is of urea and this half part is of malonic acid. Then this barbituric acid will react with HNO3 and will give us vyloric acid which on further reduction with ammonium hydrogen sulphide will give us uramyl. This uramyl on reaction with potassium cyanate in the presence of water will give us pseudo uric acid which on reaction with 20 percent hydrochloric acid and on heating water will go out in this step and we will get here uric acid from the pseudo uric acid. Then comes the Tobase synthesis. This is a commercial method of the preparation of uric acid. Here uric acid is obtained from urea and ethyl cyanoacetate. This is the urea molecule and this is the ethyl cyanoacetate. These two molecules will condense in the presence of sulfuric acid. Here also condensation will take place and we will get this moiety which on reaction with sodium hydroxide will give this cyclized product which is a unstable product and it will react with nitrous acid will undergo decarboxylation to give us 5 nitrouracil. Now this 5 nitrouracil it will again undergo reduction in the presence of ammonium hydrogen sulphide to give us amino uracil. This is the amino uracil. Now it this amino uracil by two steps by two different step can form the uric acid. It can directly undergo fusion with the urea and can give the uric acid and in the one more reaction it can also react with ethyl chloroacetate to give us the uric acid. Then comes the property of uric acid. Uric acid behaves as a weak dibasic acid and it gives salts mono and disodium ureate. While the sodium and the ammonium ureate are sparingly soluble in water, this lithium ureate is freely soluble. That is why this lithiated water is often used as a remedy to secure the elimination of uric acid from the system of patients suffering from this osteodesis which is the GOT. Then comes the reaction with the phosphoryl chloride. This uric acid on reaction with phosphoryl chloride gives us 2,6,8-trichloropurine. Uric acid can un undergo reduction reaction also. On reduction it gives us purone. One of the most important reaction is uric acid can also give burexide reaction which this reaction is used to detect the presence of uric acid. In this uric acid is treated with the ammonia which gives a purple residue which is used for the detection of uric acid. If this purple uh, color comes then the compound is the uric acid. This was all about the reactions of uric acid. Thank you.
Then after the uric acid, next important purine derivative is the xanthine. This xanthine is a uh, purine which is also present in blood and is excreted in urine. It also occur in tea extract and sproutings, seedlings. It is a parent compound of three important bases. One of them is caffeine, theobromine and theophylline. Now comes the preparation of this important xanthine derivative which may be prepared from 268 trichloropurine which is obtained by the action of phosphoryl chloride on uric acid. So this 268 trichloropurine first is prepared from the uric acid. Then this product on reaction with sodium ethoxide will give us 2 and 6 diethoxy 8 chloropurine. This intermediate compound then on reduction with hydrogen iodide will give us xanthine. This xanthine is also called as 26. This is the position 2 and this is 6. This is 26 dioxopurine. The xanthine can also be prepared from probase synthesis. Initially, this 4,5 diaminouracil is treated with formic acid to get its sodium salt. This is the sodium salt of 4,5 diaminouracil, which on further heating at 250 degree centigrade will give us xanthine. Here on heating, it will undergo cyclization to make this ring imidazole ring and we will get here the xanthine molecule. Now comes the properties of xanthine which is a crystalline substance and it also decomposes at 150 degree centigrade. It is sparingly soluble in water. Chemically it resembles with uric acid and it also forms salts with alkalis and also with hydrochloric acid and the nitric acid. When it is oxidized with potassium chlorate in acidic medium, it forms aloxone and urea. Like other hydroxy derivative of purines, xanthine also exhibits totomerism. It means it also exists in the form of keto and the enol forms. The next important purine derivative is a caffeine. You might have heard about caffeine in the tea. This caffeine is a CNS stimulant. CNS is central nervous system stimulant of methyl xanthine class. So it is a derivative of xanthine. It is a methyl xanthine in which we are having three methyl groups at the nitrogen position of the xanthine compound. This caffeine is a bitter white crystalline purine. It is an alkaloid and is chemically related to adenine and guanine bases of DNA and RNA. It occurs in dried tea leaves, coffee beans and in cola leaves. Now how we will isolate it from the waste leaf? In India, this caffeine is manufactured from the tea dust. This tea dust is the damaged tea leaves. The damaged tea leaves and the stem of the tea plant are first dried, powdered and then boiled with water and filtered hot. Then after filtration, the filtrate contains caffeine, protein and tannin. This filtrate is then treated with the basic lead acetate and from here the proteins and the tannins will precipitate and again we will filter off. Now in the filtrate we are having only the caffeine which is treated with dilute sulfuric acid first to remove any excess of lead acetate as insoluble lead sulfate. Now the resulting solution or you can say the filtrate is decolorized with animal charcoal or it, you can say it is purified and caffeine extracted from it is treated with the chloroform. This chloroform is then distilled off and the residue of crude caffeine is recrystallized from water to get the pure product. Here we get the very fine crystals of caffeine. Now comes the structure determination of this caffeine which is a methyl derivative of xanthine. Its molecular formula from the animal, elemental analysis comes to be C8H10N4O2. Then comes the presence of 3N-methyl groups. When this caffeine is subjected to Herzig-Mayer method, this Herzig-Mayer method is when a particular compound is heated with concentrated hydroiodic acid, it gives uh, the respective molecules of methyl iodide. In this case, here we are getting 3 
uh, moles of methyl iodide. So we can say that this uh, caffeine contains 3NCH3 groups or the, the 3N methyl groups. Further, we will do the oxidation on the caffeine with the different oxidizing agent. On oxidation with potassium chlorate in hydrochloric acid, caffeine gives dimethyl aloxone and methyl urea. We are getting two products. The structure of 1,3-dimethyl aloxone has been established by the fact that on hydrolysis, it yields N and dimethyl urea and mesooxalic acid. It means it contains these two moieties together. So these should be present in a cyclic uh, structure. So from this reaction, we can say that this 1,3-dimethyl aloxone is a mesooxyl sim dimethyl urea. So from this reaction, we have uh, done the structure determination of this moiety which we are got, getting on oxidation of caffeine. Then from the oxidation of caffeine to 1,3-dimethyl aloxone and monomethyl urea, it follows that caffeine has the same carbon skeleton as that of the uric acid. We have already discussed about the uric acid. At the same time, it also established the position of two methyl groups since 1,3-dimethyl group is there, there. So 1 and the 3 position, these two methyl groups are fixed. Now we have to do the third methyl group that uh, this third methyl group is present on which position of the skeleton structure of uric acid. Uh, so we can uh, first draw the part structure of caffeine which is uh, similar to the uric acid. Here this is the caffeine structure and this is the uric acid. These are similar only two methyl groups are there in the caffeine. Now comes the position of the third methyl group. During the oxidation of caffeine with the potassium chlorate in hydrochloric acid, Fisher also isolated a new product in addition to this dimethyl aloxone and the methyl urea. This new product is N-methyl hydantoin because it yields N-methyl glycine, carbon dioxide and ammonia on hydrolysis. Since on hydrolysis we are getting these three products, so before hydrolysis we should have these three uh, products in a same molecule. So in this molecule you can see that um, we will get here the carbon dioxide. From here we will get the N-methylglycine and from this NH we will get the ammonia. So we are getting these three products. Further when this caffeine is oxidized under drastic conditions, it yields dimethyl oxamide which is possible only when the third methyl group is present at the seventh position. So from this reaction we can say that the third methyl group will be at the position number 7. Now comes the position of the oxygen atoms. For this Fisher did the following reaction sequence. He has reacted the caffeine molecule with the chlorine and he got chlorocaffeine which on reaction with Methanol in the presence of sodium hydroxide first give the methoxy caffeine. This methoxy caffeine in the acidic condition on reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid will give us oxy caffeine which on methylation with methyl iodide and sodium hydroxide will give us tetramethyl uric acid. So from this sequence the oxy caffeine obtained is found to be identical with the trimethyl uric acid. Uric acid structure is already known. We have uh, trimethyl methyl groups have already done. So on the basis we can say that the oxycaffeine is having this, this structure which is the trimethyl uric acid. From the above discussed observation, it may be concluded that the caffeine should have the following structure and this structure is further confirmed by its synthesis. So for the synthesis of caffeine, one of them is Fisher's synthesis. Fisher scientist done a lot of work on caffeine. He has used uric acid. First uric acid is treated with the methyl iodide in the alkaline solution with the sodium hydroxide to give 137 trimethyl uric acid. This is 137 trimethyl uric acid. 
which on reaction with phosphoryl chloride first forms the chlorocaffeine and this chlorocaffeine on reaction with hydrogen iodide that is a reduction reaction will give us the caffeine yt this is a caffeine so this was the synthesis of caffeine now comes the trobase synthesis of caffeine in this synthesis the starting compounds are sim dimethylurea this is the sim dimethylurea and ethyl cyanoacetate this is the ethyl cyanoacetate on reaction with sodium amide in xylene xylene is a dry solvent on reaction uh, after reaction in this dry solvent first of all we will uh, get the four amino urine uh, cyclized structure which on reaction with nitrous acid will give us this product which further on reaction with sulfuric acid in the presence of zinc will give di amino and di methyl uh, derivative which will react with formic acid to give theophylline now this theophylline on reaction with methyl iodide in the presence of ethanol and sodium ethoxide will finally give us caffeine this is a commercial preparation of caffeine now this caffeine is having many uses positive and negative health effects are there associated with the caffeine purine it can treat and prevent the premature infant breathing disorders which are bronchopulmonary dysplasia of prematurity this caffeine citrate is on the who model list of essential medicines it is a medicine also caffeine is used to reduce physical fatigue and it prevents the drowsiness also it produces increased wakefulness it increases the focus and the better body coordination on the second part caffeine is having side effects also caffeine can increase blood pressure and it also causes vasoconstriction long term consumption at sufficiently high doses has been associated with arterial stiffness coffee and caffeine both can affect gastrointestinal motility and gastric acid secretions in post menopausal women this high caffeine consumption can accelerate bone loss then comes the amino derivative of purines one of them is adenine this is the six amino purine which is called as adenine it is present in nucleic acid it also occur in the pancreas of cattle and in the tea extracts this this six amino purine it resembles with the purine in its general reactions now comes the role of adenine it is a very important chemical component of both dna and rna it plays a variety of roles in biochemistry including cellular respiration in the form of both the energy rich atp which is adenosine triphosphate and the cofactors one of them is nad positive which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and the flavin adenine dinucleotide which is fad and also in the protein synthesis on treatment with nitrous acid it can be converted into hypoxanthine adenine also forms several tautomers although in an inert gas matrix the 9h adenine tautomer is formed this is the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in which we are having this is the nicotinamide nicotinic acid is pyridine with the carboxylic acid group here we are having the amide group this is the nicotinamide this is the ribose sugar this is the phosphate linkage which joins the two ribose uh, moieties together and this is the main part which is the adenine adenine this adenine is present in this cofactor which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide now comes the binding of this adenine in the nucleic acid in the dna and the rna in dna this adenine binds to thiamine via two hydrogen bonds to assist in stabilizing the nucleic acid structure while in rna 
which is used for the protein synthesis in which two steps are there translation and transcription this adenine binds to uracil so here, here we have shown the dna in the dna we are having the thymine yt and this is the adenine this adenine binds with thiamine via two hydrogen bonds these are two hydrogen bonds we have shown the amino group of adenine hydrogen of this amino group will bind with the keto group of thymine and the nitrogen of the pyrimidine ring of uh, adenine will bind with the nitrogen of the thymine in which we are having the nh this this is a hydrogen bond and one of this is a hydrogen bond so here we are getting the two hydrogen bond in the uh, thymine and the adenine this adenine forms adenosine a nucleoside when it is attached to ribose and two deoxyadenosine when it is attached to deoxyribose so depending upon the sugar whether we are taking the ribose or deoxyribose we will get the respective nucleoside it also forms adenosine triphosphate or tri uh, a nucleotide where the three phosphate groups are added to the adenosine so what is the difference between the nucleoside and a nucleotide in the nucleoside we are having only two moieties one is the adenine the nucleobase and one is the sugar and in the nucleotide we are having three moieties together one is the nucleobase one is the sugar and one is the phosphate group so when three phosphate groups are added we will get here the atp that is the aden adenosine triphosphate and when we are having the two phosphate groups in the nucleoside then we will get the adp which is called adenosine diphosphate this atp is used in cellular metabolism as one of the basic methods of transferring chemical energy between the chemical reactions two vitamins niacin and riboflavin they also binds with adenine to form essential cofactors that is nad nicotinamide di nucleotide and fad flavin adenine di nucleotide then comes the structure of adenine di phosphate this is the adp structure you can see in the structure that this is the adenine this adenine binds with the sugar moiety this is the ribose sugar and here we are having the two phosphate groups group together since this phosphate group is attached at the fifth position so it is adenosine 5 dash diphosphate this is the structure of atp and uh, energy rich compound molecule in which we are having three phosphate group this is again the adenine yt which is linked with first with the sugar and here the three phosphate groups are attached so it is a adenosine triphosphate now comes the preparation of this adenine nucleobase one of them is fischer's synthesis this adenine can be prepared from the uric acid this is the uric acid which on reaction with phosphoryl chloride first it will undergo enolization we will get here the three hydroxy group which will react with pocl3 and we will get here the trichloropurine which is 268 purine trichloropurine which on reaction with aqueous ammonia will give us 6 amino 2 and 8 dichloropurine which on reduction with hydrogen iodide will finally give us the adenine moiety one of most important preparation of adenine is tobe synthesis it is again a commercial method of preparation of adenine in this case thiourea is used thiourea will condense with the dicyno methane in the presence of sodium ethoxide will first undergo condensation to give the cyclic moiety which on reaction with nitrous acid will give the further uh, next product which on reaction with ammonium hydrogen sulfide will give the di amino derivative this di amino derivative then on further reaction with formic acid will give a one carbon added to the previous moiety which on reaction with sodium salt at 250 degree centigrade will give the 
thioderivative of adenine which on reaction with hydrogen peroxide will finally give the adenine molecule. Now comes the second important amino derivative of purine which is a guanine. Guanine is a derivative of purine consisting of a fused pyrimidine and imidazole ring with conjugated double bonds. It is one of the four main nucleobases found in the nucleic acid that is DNA and RNA. Being unsaturated, this bicyclic molecule is planar. It is 2 amino 6 hydroxypurine. The guanine can be isolated from the excretes of seabirds, which are known as guano. So, this compound is named as guan guanine. It is also used as a source of fertilizer since it is, uh, it is isolated from the excrete of seabirds. In addition to nucleic acids, this guanine it also occurs in the pancreas of cattle and in certain fish scales. Now comes the properties and reactions of guanine. Guanine also have two tautomeric forms as that of adenine and other purines. The major keto form and the rare enol form, it means that guanine uh, generally occurs in the ketonic form. This is the keto form of guanine and this is the enolic form which is uh, in the minor form or in the uh, rare form. This guanine, it also forms guanosine or nucleoside when it is attached to ribose and 2 deoxyguanosine when it is attached to deoxyribose. Here also depending upon the sugar, the 5 carbon sugar, whether we are taking ribose, we will get here the guanosine, riboguanosine and in case of deoxyribose, we will get here the 2 deoxyguanosine. As that of adenine, it also forms GTP that is guanosine triphosphate or tri, uh, a nucleotide when three phosphate groups are added to guanosine and when two phosphate groups are added, it will form a nucleotide which is called as GDP that is a guanosine diphosphate. As adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with the uracil, guanine also forms hydrogen bonds, it binds with the cytosine through three hydrogen bonds. Here in the structure you can see this is the cytosine moiety and this is the guanine moiety and we have made here the three hydrogen bonds. This cytosine molecule, the amino in the cytosine moiety, the amino group act as hydrogen donor and the C2 carbonyl and the N3 imine, these two acts as the hydrogen bond acceptor. So, here this bond is uh, from the uh, uh, site of the guanine and this uh, cytosine part is the bond acceptor and, and in the first uh, amino group part of the cytosine, this is the hydrogen donor. It is giving the hydrogen to the guanine while in the carbonyl and the imine position, it is getting the bond from the guanine. So, these three bonds are of having the uh, different nature, but uh, these are the hydrogen bonds and the, are the strong bonds. This guanine can also be hydrolyzed with the strong acid to glycine, ammonia, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide also. First, this guanine is deaminated to xanthine, first it will form xanthine molecule. Then this xanthine on treatment with nitrous acid further will convert into the glycine. This is the glycine zwitter ion, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and ammonia. Guanine oxidizes more readily than adenine. Then comes the preparation of guanine. Fisher prepared the guanine from the uric acid. Here again the uric acid the keto form of uric acid first will enolize to give us the three hydroxy groups in the uric acid which on reaction with phosphoryl chloride will give us 268 trichloropurine which on further reaction with aqueous potassium hydroxide at 100 degree centigrade will give us dichloro 
purine which further on reaction with ethanol in the presence of ammonia will give us a intermediate which on reduction with finally give the guanine moiety. Then comes a commercial method which is the Trobe's method. It involves heating 2, 4, 6 triamino, 1, 6 dihydro, 6 oxypyrimidine with formic acid for several hours. But first of all, this moiety has to be prepared which can be prepared from urea and ethyl cyanoacetate in the presence of sodium ethoxide and we will get this uh, reactant. This reactant on further re reaction with nitrous acid and ammonium hydrogen sulphate will give the uh, next compound which will uh, give uh, which will on the rearrangement and reaction with formic acid will give us the guanine. Now comes the uses of this guanine nucleobase. This guanine is a crystal of rhombic platelets composed of multiple transparent layers, but they have a high index of refraction that partially reflects and transmits light from layer to layer. Thus, they produces a pearly luster. This pearly luster of this guanine is used in the cosmetic industry for the preparation of various product. In these product, this guanine is used as an additive like in uh, for example in shampoo where it provides a pearly iridescent effect. It is also used in metallic paints and stimulated pearls and plastics. It provides luster to eye shadow and nail polish also. It can be applied by spray, by painting or by dipping method. Now comes a few questions based on today's lecture. One of them is what are purines, give some examples and their classification. Then discuss the evidences that led to the structure of uric acid. Discuss the implications of excess uric acid in body. Write the test for detection of uric acid which is the muroxide test. How the xanthine can be prepared from uric acid and how this xanthine is related to uric acid how caffeine is related to xanthine and how it can be prepared. Then its commercial preparation which is the Trobe's synthesis. Now discuss about the adenine and guanine nitrogenous bases and write the synthetic methods of these two amino derivatives of purines. Thank you. Uh, dear friends, on that note, we would like to thank Dr. Singhal for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. Friends, this is our continuous effort to bring knowledgeable and knowledge enriched lectures for you. And this was lecture in the same uh, effort. On that note, thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.